Hi everybody, John Meadows here, and I'm with the muscle doc himself, Dr. Jordan Shallow, and today you all are going to love this. He's going to take me through three things that are going to help uh, specifically with squat strength, and I think we could all use a better squat. So you guys have been following me, you know I have kind of some core issues and things like that that uh, don't feel so good when I squat. So anyways, we're going to go through three things here, so I'm going to let Jordan kick it off and walk me through, um, so let's go. Uh, so we're gonna walk through three things, sort of fundamental basics for all squatting. It's gonna be hip mobility, hip stability, and core stability. So the first thing, you're gonna be getting that mobility into hip extension. So what we're gonna have John do, he's gonna anchor that back foot. So notice that that heel kind of comes right in on the rig. So that's going to keep that hip neutral the entire time. Now all the stretching is going to come from the pelvis. So kind of think of walking around a clock, right? So right now John's straight up at midnight. So he's going to tuck that pelvis underneath. He's going to drive that hip forward, tuck the rib cage down slightly there. So he's going to just get into like straight line extension. This is where a lot of people kind of their hip flexor stretching begins and ends. So we're going to add a couple elements to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to have John open up. So he's going to walk that foot out. He's going to square shoulders and pelvis up to me back foot still anchored, right? So he's, now he's gonna come in. Now he's going through hip extension with a bit of rotation, a bit of relative abduction of the hip. So it's just a different plane of hip extension that he's stretching into. So he's gonna sink in, just hold there, try and breathe into that, in through the nose, keep the rib cage tucked down. And now this is the tricky part, and this is where a lot of people are gonna fail. So we're at, let's call this, I don't know what, John, 9.30, 10 o'clock, all right, I'll give you 10. So now we're gonna walk across. Let's try and pass midnight and see how much relative hip internal rotation we can get. So now the big thing here, is you wanna make sure that, that that tension is coming out the hip and not at the knee. So squaring the shoulders up, bring that pelvis towards, so tuck this hip underneath. There, and now just keep the rib cage tucked down, right? So sometimes you might wanna grab a dowel or something to support, keeping the shoulders square with the hip, creating relative internal rotation while we're in extension of the hip. And just want you to hold in that bottom position, focus on breathing in, in through the nose, out through the mouth, just hold 12, 15 seconds each, try and go a little bit deeper into the stretch. Good. So at each range, we're gonna to look to hold 12 to 15 seconds. Um, we're just trying to get a change at the level of the muscle, right? So we're not trying to stretch any joint capsules or anything like that. So we wanna make sure we get in position, find that end range, hold, and breathe through that 15 seconds or 12 to 15 seconds. So start at midnight, open up, go to two or go to 9.30, 10 o'clock, wherever you can get comfortably, and then walk back around, get into that internal rotation, I mean, one o'clock, 1.30, two o'clock, and we're gonna hold there 15, 15 12 to 15 seconds through. Um, and we're gonna go around this three times. All right, guys, so the second thing we're gonna do, we just mobilize the hips, got our hips into extension, relative abduction, external rotation, all that. So a bunch of range of motion should be just gained through the hips. Now we're gonna look to stabilize. We're gonna stabilize this new range of motion that we've just created. So something as simple as a single leg RDL. What John's gonna do slight bend in the knee, and then he's gonna think, drive this hip hamstring back. So hamstring, glute, right from the dish tube. Good, so notice the shakiness of the foot. Right? That's telling me there's a lot of instability in this hip. So we're going to try and drive this high. So when you come back, think of driving that heel to the ceiling. So grab the floor with your feet. There you go. Good. Use that dowel where you need. Good. And come back up. So when you increase the range of motion, you need to make sure that we have the functional stability and structurally unsafe position. So all we're going to do is really try and focus on that glute, minimizing the motion. So look at the foot, look at the knee. Every rep, we're trying to lock that in a little bit more. So we're using the dowel in this, in this progression, or regression rather. Um, but moving forward, we want to be able to do this without the dowel moving. So. Right. I'll try it roughly. Yeah. This might be a little Good. How's that? Good, yeah, I want you to do a few more. Now I want to make sure the spine doesn't move. All right, so John's got pretty good range of motion right about there. Now come up. So once the hips reaches end range of motion, the spine starts to bend. So we just want to make sure it's all in the hip. So tucking the rib cage down, slight bend in the knee. Good there, back up. Perfect. So the goal long term is going to be get that foot in wall, very stable within our own function, right? Not externalized into into the stability with the dowel. Uh, so this is going to be something. So follow up the stretching. 
six, eight, 10, 12, 15 reps. This is something you really can't overdo as far as frequency goes because we spend so much time sitting in an unstable position that as much as we can accumulate out of that position as far as using the stability to lock that hip down, the better. So in a pre-workout setting, stretch first, 12 to 15 reps, three to five times through, then we'll move on to the next thing. All right, guys, so for the third step of this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on stabilizing the spine. So increasing, um, or utilizing forces of instability rather than resistance. So John's just gonna use his own body weight to manipulate the leverage so to make it easier or harder. So starting off, what we're just gonna do is kind of bury the fist right in the sternum, keeping the rib cage tucked down. So the whole idea is we're gonna make sure this doesn't go into extension. Right, that's the function of the core, right? So we're gonna make sure that low back doesn't go into extension. He's just gonna hinge. Hinge at the hip, keeping that rib cage tucked down. Flex the quads. So notice how he starts to shake. Good, there, back up. And then back down again. So we're just gonna try and override that instability. So keeping the rib cage tucked. This is just containing the function of the core. So we're gonna keep this from going into extension right there. Back up, good. And now over time, as we wanna progress this, we just move the hands over. So if you can get hands full overhead, you've created a lot of distance. That's a lot of spinal stability that you're gonna to have to resist. So keep that hollowed. Keep the rib cage down. There, up, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's all it takes, is just a little bit of change in distance with the hands. Manipulate your own leverages to create more instability. So it's a different stimulus of strength. We're not extending the low back to flex the low back. We're not training it like we train a bicep. It's different. We want to train stability and not strength. So resisting force rather than exerting force. That's going to be the key to this. So it's almost like really eccentric emphasized. Yeah. Lower. Yeah. Okay. How often can people do this one? It depends on tolerance, right? A lot of people, with it, when they train core from an action standpoint, like you're doing your rope crunches and all that, they find this to be their strength and position. In an, in an extended position, that's where they know to be able to exert force. So depending on what your training's like, it will depend on tolerance, it'll depend on how much you can recover from it. Obviously body weight's gonna make a difference, right? Like the more you have to resist, usually people who have more weight to resist actually have a decreased competency in their ability to actually resist force. So people who are leaner usually do things that require more spinal stability. People who are less lean, let's say, yeah. usually are, do activities that are more sedentary and actually have less spinal stability. So this is a little bit more of an advanced move. That's why we start super tucked in, super um, conservative like very minimal distance, and we're trying to make sure that we can control that anti-extension, keep the low back straight as you go down. Don't allow this to open up and flare, and then as you progress from there, start to move the hands up. So most people, I mean, six, eight, 10 reps, three to five rounds through, this would be something I do uh, every other day, frequency high if the, if the density is fairly low in a session, so you can accumulate a lot of practice throughout the week get better. Stability is something you adapt to really quickly. Gotcha. So give it like 48 hours. Yeah, I would say minimum, especially okay. if you're doing like squats and deadlifts unless and things. You, unless the recovery. And if it's new for people, it might get a little sore maybe. Yeah. So then give it some extra time to recover. That's right. Okay. So now I'm going to be able to squat a thousand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to that. All right. We're going to load it up tomorrow. These drills become the most noticeable is when you're in the hole of the squat, right? So when you're in that bottom position of the squat, you're gonna be able to get there easier with the increased mobility. You're gonna be able to exert more force because of the hip stability and the core stability. So as you get better, the way you're gonna be able to tell that these are really carrying over is that you're gonna be, feel a lot stronger in better positions when you're in the hole of a squat. Um, so those are the three pillars of a good squat. You need the right hip mobility, you need to be able to stabilize that range of motion, and you need core stability, right? We need to make sure that we're training core stability and not strength. We need to make sure that we're isolating the function of uh, the dysfunction in the hip that most people succumb to. So getting that hip extension is going to be big. It allows us to access more hip stability as we increase our range of motion and we lock it down with spine stability. Now you're ready to load the bar.